So today on Armbar Arcade Completes Gran Turismo Sport GT League, we've got our toughest test yet. We've got the Boxer Spirit Championship, and you see there in the permitted cars list, we've got the Porsche 911, the Subaru WRX, Toyota 86, all that sort of stuff. But at the bottom there, we've got the VW Samba Bass. You know I like a good challenge. That's exactly the car we're going to be using. Only 33 horsepower, but you know what? It's the lightest car there by over 200 kilos. That is quite substantial. I think we can use our handling advantage, guys, our weight advantage. I think we'll still be able to come through with three wins. Let's do this. 12 seconds later. So here we go, guys. We're down into race one, and we're accelerating towards turn one, taking turn one flat out. Look at, look at how great the handling is on this van. Now we're accelerating up to speed, and... Oh. Well, we've been past there, but we're still in ninth. That's okay. We've lost another position, but never mind. We'll get you back soon, sir. And, um... Uh... Oh. Um... Well, back to the old drawing board. Yeah, hello gamers and welcome back to the Armbar Arcade. As you can see, we are back on Gran Turismo Sport GT League and even by my ambitious standards, trying to win the Boxer Spirit Championship in a VW van? Maybe a little bit beyond my remit. Just a little bit. The problem is with this championship though, is that the selection of cars for it, as you saw, is quite limited. We've got the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, which is god tier. Like if you look over here, that's got nearly 500 horsepower. Subaru WRX STI, that's kind of mid tier. Then two, the two Toyota 86s, there's that one, and then there's the Grrrm version, which is kind of like Charmander going into Charmeleon. Look at that, it's like, oh, Charmander 86 is evolving. It evolved into Charmeleon. It's got a wing, but it also handles a lot better, funnily enough. And um, yeah, we got that, we saw how that went. And weirdly enough, in my test races, it says this Porsche is supposed to show up, but it rarely ever does. So our main opposition's this. Like, come on, game, give me something. It's bad enough that the other series have not put enough fast cars in them to be a really difficult challenge. This one, you've got a really powerful car that you can put in this races, and you don't. What, what is with that game? Let's pick our car. We, As you can see, I've tested a, a range of contenders for this one. And for this series, I think I'm going to use the 86 Grumman, the 86 Charmeleon. Hey, so funny story. You remember I said that the Porsche 911 GT3 RS rarely ever seems to show up in this race? Yeah, one of them heard me. They heard that heel promo I cut and has decided to answer my open challenge. So, um, yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go over here. I'm just going to move that up there a little bit. And we're just going to move I mean, that down a little bit. I'm just going to move that down to the soft setting. No, I'm not, normally I don't like to move things so they're soft. Um, and, um, uh, pray for me. Here we go. <laughs> right, no fucking around this time. This is my I'm asking around on YouTube camera view, but this is my I'm trying to actually go fast camera view. And that is because we are we are gonna have to, because that there's it's not just because of the Porsche. I mean it's mainly because of the Porsche, let's be honest. But another weird thing in this series is that, you know, like the Subaru Impreza, it's X amount of horsepower more than us. But weirdly, especially in this race, like look, the leader is like accelerate powering away to us in about 22 seconds. In previous attempts of this race, I've gone the entire race without that gap shrinking at all. The leader is just, like, a god-tier driver. I mean, at this point, it's... The guy driving the Subaru that's leading the race right now is a T. Yamauchi, so I don't know if Kaz Yamauchi has secretly slipped his cousin into the race and given him, like, a Uber STI 500 horsepower god-tier Subaru and just not told the organizers. But, um, well, let's see here. So, we are now passing one of us, one of us, one of us. That's a lot slower. Uh, and now we've got the inside of this guy as well, and we really, we really have to make hay while the sun is shining. And the sun is actually shining over Alsatia Village. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to roll with that. If you want to correct me in the comments, please do so. I'm sure you will. That's what YouTube comments are for when they're not being absolute dumpster fires. Um, which most of the time ours aren't, which is quite nice. Oh, God, that was nearly a dumpster fire recorder, but that's okay. Yeah, we are barely chipping into the leader's advantage at all. So, I might be a little bit quiet in this. What is it with me whenever I drive a Toyota 86 or very- Oh my god! Oh dear! Oh, that was close. That was close! Some poo, maybe, just dribble now a little bit there. Um, but yeah, what is it about me when I'm driving a GT86 kind of car that the races are super tense and I have to basically drive them perfect to even have a chance of winning? Something about that. They seem to be a good car for underdog races. Well, having said that, I'm- Barely chipping into the gate. It's weird. Very odd. 
But uh, we're gonna have to be perfect here. And I think the thing what doesn't help is I'm not very good at this track at all. I'm just this is probably the fancy track I am by far and away worst at. So basically, I'm in a sort of terrifying sandwich. I am the meat in a terrifying sandwich of the leader is really, really fast. It's the fastest Subaru driver since Colin McRae. Um, and behind me, the other slice of bread in this given sandwich is a Porsche 911 GT3 RS with nearly 500 horsepower. Who is, as I speak, somewhere back there, power- I, I might actually be here, I think I may have just seen a dash of yellow in the distance. Anyway, let's just get on with this, come on, come on. And we have gained a little bit on that lap, we gained about five seconds on the leader. But when the lead, is, the lead gap is as massive as it is, it's gonna be tricky. It's gonna be tricky. This uh, actually, when I did that intro, being like, oh, "I'm gonna win this race in the VW Samba bus," when I said this was our toughest challenge yet, I may not have been that facetious, to be honest with you. You're not offering a challenge at all. I wasn't referring to you when I mentioned that, Mr. Christensen. Obviously, no relation to Tom Christensen. Otherwise, you'd have got even a modicum of his talent. <laughs> it's quite considerable talent there. But um, still, 17 seconds down. Yeah, I don't know if it's just I'm terrible at this track. Well, like I say, the AI is just on a flex, but uh, we are gaining bit by bit. If the leader does make a serious cock up, which this being Gran Turismo AI is entirely possible, there's still half a chance. So you know what we've got to do? Don't stop believing. Hold on to that feeling. <laughs> Street lights, people, cones. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I've missed a cone. Anyway, we're now up behind the first of the Armada of Subaru WRXs, and we passed him easily. Which further adds to the theory of what the hell is in under the leader's bonnet. I've caught up and passed one Subaru easily, and yet the lead one is 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 clearly not a Subaru WRX. There is some some fibbing has happened here. Maybe it's running like some secret spark plugs or something. It's one of those uh, one of those grand stories. I used to have a book actually called Cheating. It was all about the amount of times in NASCAR. It was primarily NASCAR, so I don't know what that tells you about the sport. Um, the amount of times people have tried to bend the rules over in NASCAR. And some of it was really fascinating, like the whole the moonshining stuff, the whole T-Rex, Jeff Gordon car, things like that. And, um, yeah, basically, whoever built Jeff Gordon's uh, T-Rex car has obviously built T. Yamauchi a Subaru Impreza, because that's what he's driving at the moment. But... We are cutting into his advantage a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit, not much, we're chipping away at it. We may just about get to him near the end of the race, and we are coming up behind another of this phalanx of Subaru Impressors. What a good word that is. I'm proud of myself. Good word, brain. Oh my god, even better dive bomb. Even better dive bomb. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Michaela. Look at you there. Look at you. We just completely ambushed. That actually was dive bomb city there. So now we come on to lap three or four. Ten seconds is the advantage. And, whisper it quietly, that Porsche is still somewhere behind us. I'm having a look. I can't see it. And the thing is, it's useful. It's in yellow and black, so it's basically a massive wasp. And, ooh, oh, may, maybe it's... I don't know if you can see it. In the very distance, there was a car behind the red Subaru, and then I think I saw a flash of yellow. So, I think he's on his way. If I am the train that is just about to depart the station, he is running down the platform, desperately mashing the door buttons, hoping they've not locked yet. Or if this is an old train, he's... <laughs> oh dear. D dude, did you not get my memo? <laughs> Someone has actually entered a VW bus unironically in this... Oh dear. Deary me. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, that's... And he's been lapped. Like, I knew the VW Samba bus was quite slow. A bit slow, you know, not really that fast, but wow. Wow, we're not at the half mile Northern Ireland Speedway. Northern Isle Speedway, not Northern Ireland Speedway. <laughs> yeah, it's Northern Ireland's first NASCAR track. Um, so up the inside. Meanwhile, during all that, we've just casually passed Figueroa, Figueroa, Figueroa for second place. So we are up to second, and I tell you what, there was me moaning about, oh, we're not catching the leader at all. He must be using some sort of moonshine nitrous injected god tiered Subaru built by the spirit of Colin McRae and Richard Burns and uh, uh, given a magic spell by Dumbledore but we are gaining we are gaining gaining <laughs> we are we are doing it like James May we are gaining gaining so I tell you what it's this cat there it is that is the leader holy shit holy shit holy shit etc um clip the apex and what's more that Porsche still has not found us yet. 
I'm a little bit surprised about. I thought it would just shred through this field like a hot knife through butter. Let's get these breaking points right. Come on. Come on. Now, I also am wary of the fact that the AI Yamauchi there, the leader, could do what the AI did in the Tourist Trophy and suddenly fill the Max Verstappen bar, as I call it, and suddenly get really good late on. So, I have to keep the pressure on here. It's down to just 3.3 seconds, though. Hold on to your hats. It's going to be another one of those classic Atlanta, I mean, now Seisha finishes. Come on. Come on, car. Everything you have. I've got to say, this car is absolutely phenomenal. It's like everything I love about the regular 86, but everything made a little bit better. And we're going to need it, because I don't know if you saw in the background there, but look who's just made the pass for third. It's the Porsche. There he is. He's gaining on us, and we're gaining on the lead. In fact, we haven't gained on the leader that much. Got to put this right. Come on. Come on. The leader is now... 3.6 seconds. He's trying to stabilize the gap. I think the AI is doing that thing again of getting better on the final lap. Oh my god, and the Porsche is flying up behind us. Okay, grit your teeth. This is going to go down to the wire. We're either going to die defending second or die going for the win. Either way, we're going to probably die. Oh no, there we go. Come on. Got a great run for that corner. With oh my god, helicopters flying overhead. Crikey, that was a bit nerve-wracking. That Porsche is coming up behind us very quickly. Right, I'm shit at this corner. Get it right. Get it right. Get the corner right. Get the corner right. Don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. It's like a horror movie. It's like a horror movie. Don't look behind you. Oh my god, I look behind me. Ah! Help! Help! I'm pooing myself. I'm pooing my pants. Oh god. Oh, we are literally... The way this race is going, we are literally going to come across the line three wide. All right, come on. Just get to the next corner. Get to the next corner. I oh know he's already there. He's already there. Help. Right, defend, defend, defend. There we go. Take a shallow line through here. Shallow line through here. And then dive bomb the shit out of the Subaru. Oh, we're going to miss. Going to miss, but we've also managed to put a little bit of gap between us and the Porsche. Driven by Magnani. Oh my god, he's already there. This is terrifying. This is terrifying. It's like racing the Terminator. Come on. Final corners are coming up. We're going to have to pull off the dive bomb of the. Oh my god! Ah! He's, he's right there! Holy poo! Jesus, poo, Christ! Right, two of the greatest corners of our career coming up, hopefully. Right, come on. Oh, we're not going to make the pass for the win. We're going to have to just run to the line. Yamauchi's just about going to get the win. Can we come across the line? We're going to have to block. We're going to have to throw the block. Yes! Oh, dear. Oh, blimey. Blimey, and indeed, Charlie. I don't know who Charlie is, but wow, that was some race. Oh, <laughs> well, we didn't quite catch him out in the Subaru in the end. He's nitrous injected magic Subaru in the end prevailed by 1.1 seconds, but we did just beat the Porsche with a car handicap of plus 60%. Oh dear, and I am legitimately sweating. This is, the sweat is real right now. I'm gonna have a sip of water, not even tea, I need water because it's been that sweaty of a race. Mm. Mm. Oh, there we go. Probably gonna pour the rest of the bottle over my head. That's what race drivers do after a race, isn't it? And champagne and stuff. So while we celebrate our holiday and podium, let's move on to the next race. So as we start the second race of the Boxer Spirit Championship, at Autodrama Maggiore, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is, there's no Porsche 911 in this race. The bad news, there's still a phalanx of Subaru Impreza's miles up the road. So let's go hunt them down, shall we? Hopefully this time, without the constant paralyzing terror of being hunted down by the motoring equivalent of Jaws, we can uh, focus on just putting in four perfect laps. And we're going to need them, because once again, that gap is out to over, well, just under 20 seconds at the moment. And we're going to have to put in four perfect laps to chase it down, probably. That's not how to do it. That's not a perfect... That's not perfection. Perfection does not involve using all of the road that's not the track. And now running out onto the... Oh, that was close. Running it right out onto the rumble strip. That's another reason I like this car. Because it's got all that extra rear grip, you can just sort of really trust in it. You can really throw it into corners and trust that it'll, uh, it'll um, stick for you. Really good. Anyway, now down to the hairpin. Favourite corner on this awesome track. Poly Polyphony, you really did a good job. I'm quick to criticise your game sometimes, but you knocked this track out of the park. Seriously, it was amazing. And um, you're rubbish, aren't you? you? I mean, you're just terrible. You're terrible. Just so bad. 
Look at you there. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Anyway. Uh, can you take this corner flat? Oh, yeah, no. Not quite. Not quite. Poo. Some more poo happened there. But we are mostly flat. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> there was me thinking that it would be just as hard, if not harder, to catch up to the lead Subaru. Ke Kevin Willis. I've decided your name is Kevin. We're shredding into his lead. It's ridiculous. It's not even close. We're up to sixth place already. So we're charging through the field, and we've not got a Porsche behind us to worry about. To be honest, that probably would make this race a little bit more tense if we didn't have the Porsche behind, because where it's more of a flat-out track... Actually, I, d I don't actually know if it is. It's like... In a way, it is, because it's got these kind of relatively long straights. Uh, but on the other, it's almost like Alsatia, where it's more hilly. Kind of, you need more power off the corners, do you know what I mean? Whereas this, you kind of... There's a lot of fast corners where you can use the natural handling to, to make up for any lack of speed, you know? So, um, anyway, we're now behind Christina Ricci's brother. And we're now alongside Christina Ricci's brother. And we're now past Christina Ricci's brother. Because, uh, Christina Ricci, not, not much of a racing driver, and neither is her brother. And we're now behind this guy here. One of our fellow 86 Grins. Who's terrible. <laughs> and now, we're already up to fourth place on the first lap. I think that first race may have battle hardened us. We are not fucking around this time around. Let's go. In fact, I'm feeling so confident. I'm going back to my I'm arsing around on YouTube camera angle. Look at this. I'm just gonna vlog the next few laps. Hey, look at this. Look at this. Oh, I am gonna vlog me just embarrassing a bunch of fools in a Subaru. And it's still gonna be anything better than Lo it's still gonna be miles better than anything Logan Paul has ever done. Uh, anyway. So that's in the next corner. Oh, dude. Dude, Jimenez, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're being terrible, that's what you are. You're being so bad! Being so bad is what you are. It's just so bad. So bad. So bad. Anyway, must stop doing that. <laughs> it's getting annoying even to me. Oh, oh, Christ. And, um, well, I'll tell you what, so much for needing four perfect laps. I can already see the leader. I can already see the leader. Blimey, Charlie. This. <laughs> like, guys, Willis and Hood, we will find you in the hood. And, you know what I talked about earlier, where the AI suddenly get really good? You, you're, you're gonna have to need that, you're gonna hope that ha- I'm gonna have to find some words to say, and you're gonna have to hope that kicks in pretty soon. Because I'm coming to get you already, and we're barely at half distance with the race, but then again, then it completely fell off there. And so is Willis, they're now side by side in front of us. Oh, blimey Charlie, what is going on here? We're now up into- This is the battle for the lead. And we're halfway around the second lap. Oh my god! <laughs> there was me trying to be like, look at look at me, I'm gonna just pass him on the outside. <laughs> just completely fell off. What a twat. Anyway, let's try and pass the leader and not completely fuck it up this time. But it will be interesting, I'm, I'm actually curious to see just how much faster these two get. They're gonna have to get a lot faster if they have any hope of winning, because I'm already here. And, uh, well, they should have a horsepower advantage on me. Not a huge amount, because I did obviously up my horsepower for the last race. I might have to take that back off again, depending on how they perform at the Nürburgring. I don't know. Uh, that is the Nürburgring Grand Prix track, not the Nordschleifer again. I'm still washing my pants from the last time I was driving there. Um, and I've gained a little bit in this final sector, but I have been slacking a little bit. And now we're getting back to some twisty corners, and that gap has just vanished! It's just shrunk again! Look at it! Look at that little gap there that you produced. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And now it's, now it's vanished. Now it's non-existent. Now it's gone, and I'm in front of you. But, this is a straight away. And... Well, is he gonna try and pass me? Is he gonna try and pass me? Come on, you've got some speed. You've got the power, mate. You've got the power! I've got the power! He's passed me back up the inside. I'm gonna try and cut back now. And stop singing. So... I, I, no one likes my singing. Why do I still sing in videos? Well, I normally sing when I'm wearing it. Ooh, go on. Oh, go on. Up the inside. Clean as a whistle. Clean as a... Clean as a whistle? Clean as a whistle! Yes! Look at that! I actually did an overtake without just bundling someone off. <laughs> I actually did a real overtake, guys. Oh, oh, here we go. See, I'm wondering now if their Max verstappen ometer has kicked in. Oh, <laughs> It did briefly. It did briefly. And then they realised they have all the talent of... Uh, Ayrton Senna's thumb, and um, even that's being generous to them. <laughs> oh, look who it is! 
that blithering idiot in the bus again? <laughs> Aren't they actually competing in this race? Or is that just some sort of elaborate, like, track tour you're going on there? Let's, hang on, let's see if we can do it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm giving it a bomb draft. I didn't like that. Oh, neither did my car, to be honest. We've now lost second place. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> We're just giving a, a bus a, a bomb draft when it was doing about 12 miles an hour. You can't do corners. You really don't know how corners work, do you, hood? Just go back to the hood. Go back to the hood immediately. And meanwhile, we have got to get to the lead immediately. Now, let's not fall off like we did here last lap. We're going to, oh, we're on the grass. We're on the grass. We need to pass him on the grass. There's a cone that's already died. It's just preempted me turning up at the track and just fell over anyway. Oh, bollocks. Do you know what's happening? <laughs> Do you know what's happening? They're, they're not getting much faster at the moment. I'm just getting worse. I'm getting cocky. I'm being like, hey, look at me, I've already caught up to you, I'm just gonna play around with you for a bit. Ha 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 ha, I've fallen off, ha <laughs> I'm gonna play with this VW bus. Well, do you know what, AJ? It's time to refocus. Let's get this shit done. Let's get this win in the bag, and- Oh my god! Holy shit! Well, thank you, Hood. That was a nice sort of splash of cold water in the face to remind me that we are still in a motor race here. It is still competitive, and you are still behind me, and you still want my position. So, alright, reminder duly served. It's time to go hunting for Willis. Presumably, no relation at all to Bruce Willis. I don't know why I always do this. I go for the surname and then go, hmm, what about their famous cousin? It's like the Stig on Top Gear. It's like, all we know is, he's not Bruce Willis. He's Bruce Willis' Brazilian cousin, driving a Subaru Impreza. <laughs> Did you see why I was known as Mini Jeremy Clarkson when I was younger? I perfected that impression down pat. But anyway, we're on to the final lap now, and we still have a race to win. And we are still second by half second, so... In lieu of no Porsche 911 swarming up behind us. We can take our time here, we can focus, and we can get the move done. Look around the outside there, there's no room there. He's now trying to jump on the brakes in front of us. We have got to be careful of Hood though, he's still there. And actually the fourth place Jimenez uh, Subaru is actually closing in as well, so... Be just a little bit careful here, this uh, race could still spring a surprise. This is the Gran Turismo AI after all. Ab oh my- <laughs> It's a bump and run! It's a bump and run! <laughs> we just punted the lead. It was an accidental bump and run, I'm sorry! I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna leg it now. I'm gonna leg it now. <laughs> Genuinely did not mean to do that. I forgot they let off through those corners. And I was like, hmm, where should I put punt? Oh, sorry! Sorry about that. I'm tempted to let him back through and be sporting, but you know what? With the, uh, the masses of Subarus gathering behind me, I think it's time to shut this race down. It's time to take this thing home. It's time to go home, guys. Your superior horsepower will be no match for the fact that I actually know how to deal with fast corners and you really do not. It'd be quite something if I'm just gloating all over the place and then just completely fuck up the very last corner and lose the race. It'll be the ultimate Lindsay Jacobellis moment. Still potentially the most hilarious moment in all of professional sport ever. Aside from Germany beating Brazil 7 to Oh my god! We just ran over that cone and literally got airtime! That was crazy! Anyway, in this corner, we've got, we've got three seconds on them behind. Seriously, guys, as soon as I started paying attention, you were history. <laughs> just, just get on my level. You never will be on my level. No matter how much random AI arbitrary I'm suddenly talented now, you try and do. It just won't work. It just will not lurk. Work. Will not lurk? Will not work. And we're just gonna murder some more cones now. And there's a cone, there's a cone dead. Oh, crawl, no, 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 no. Steady on. We're getting a little, we're not, we're not quite that far ahead to suddenly start running off and killing cones. And we've got two more corners left, and they are just not really close enough for a child, I don't think. We've gotta be careful as well. There is a long straight run to the line, and one final cone here. Oh, we missed it, bugger. But anyway, it will not be enough for them. It won't, they're going to battle side by side for second, but we are going to come across the line and take an easy victory in the box spirit. After such a tough first race, that was a stroll in the park, to be honest, with some nice birds tweeting. And, I don't know, uh, a nice sort of lake with some paddlers sort of going around and some swans quacking at you to get you. Do swans quack? I don't know. That's a question I didn't think I'd be asking in this video. And uh, as you can see there, um, the, the results of the Samba bus not really improving.
<laughs> I don't know if they ever will, to be honest. I don't know how much tuning you can do to a VW Samba bus, unless you basically do what Renault did with the Espace once, which is actually put a Formula 1 engine in it and make it a Formula 1 car in a people carrier body. That mean, can someone do that? Can someone please do I really want someone to do that now. But anyway, in the meantime, while you're off getting to work with that, let's move on to the final race. So here is the Boxer Spirit Race 3 at the Nürburgring Grand Prix track. And um, I've got some more good news and some more bad news for you. I'll tell you the good news first. We've still got all our upgrades. I'm still feeling pretty confident this car can be really fast. I think we can chase down those Subarus. And here's the bad news, though. You remember that Porsche from the first race? Yeah, he's back. Literally the same one. I checked on the entry list. He's starting 12th again. It's yellow and black. And um, if it's on fire, we're terrified. That's why I'm legging it. I'm not hanging around here. Mr. Choi, I would normally be like, ha, ha I'm passing you. Look at you. I'd normally cut a heel promo on you. Not today. We need, we need to get moving. Because even if we catch up with the Subarus fast enough, that Porsche is going to eat into our lead very quickly. So as we saw in that first race, like, I couldn't have kept that Porsche behind me much longer. So we really have to get our heads down and focus in this one. This is epic music on. Editing Adam, you may have to deploy epic music. I will leave it up to your jurisdiction. Depends on if the race turns out epic. It may just be an epic disappointment. But, oh god, that corner was an epic disappointment. Now, now, AJ, we can't be doing more corners like that. Alright, we've got to focus here. We are gaining on the leading Subarus, though, so there is that. And, um... I don't know if anyone was in a Samba bus in this race. Can you imagine if it was like, if the Samba bus was like the Porsche's teammate? He was just trying to run interference for the Porsche. That would be a genius strategy. I think Jeremy Clarkson pitched that on Top Gear. He once said if he owned a Formula 1 team, he'd get a really fast driver, and then he'd be the other driver, so he'd be terrible and hold everyone up, while the fast driver just legged it. <laughs> Which, in a way, I wouldn't mind. Just fully embrace team orders. I think that'd be quite interesting. Um, so... And in fact, that has kind of happened in a few race series down the years when team orders got out of control. Hello, British Touring Car 1992 season finale, anyone? Where it was like John Cleland and Tim Harvey were the championship rivals and then Tim's teammate Steve Soper was just like, and me too! Fuck you, John! I'm going to missile you off the track! And John Cleland's all like, oh, the man's an animal! Ugh. Scottish Ridge! <laughs> anyway. Right, so we're already up to sixth place. We are cutting into the lead quite nicely. It's another four-lapper. So as we come up to the chicane for the first time, can we get up the inside of Edgar? He's egging us on. We've just killed the cone. That is... Oh my god, no, he's still there. And we complete the pass. Nice. We needed to get that done quite nice and smooth. And I'm just looking in my mirror a little bit. I can't see any flashes of yellow on the horizon yet. Which is good. Very good. <laughs> Normally it's like, oh, I can see some flashes of yellow on the horizon. Oh, it's a sunny day. It's a sunny day. You know, it's a nice, nice sunrise or a sunset. Yeah, in this case, no. It's not a thing I like at all. Reminds of that old Kaiser Chief song. It's not a thing that I like. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Yeah, trust me, there is a song on the first Kaiser Chiefs album that goes like that, and it's brilliant. Uh, anyway, we have caught up to the first of the Subarus, the Armada of Subarus. Ian McCarth McCarthy? Not Ian McCarthy, the football manager. Otherwise, right now, I'd be like, hey, Icky who the fuck is this guy coming up on me outside? And he looks like that guy from the Muppets. <laughs> That's not him. And there's a... Hi! There's a photographer on the inside of that corner. Oh, where are we going? Oh my... We're using all of the track, including some bits that haven't really been built yet. Let me check my mirror. Nope, still can't see any Porsche yet. And our gap to the leader is decreasing as well, so everything going well so far. And we are up to third. Oh, but I still can't do that corner. This is how intense this race is. I am now doing that thing of, like, actually yeeting my head into the corners, like I'm actually in a race car. It's like when you, when you get so much into a racing game, you start steering with the controller. <laughs> like you actually turn the controller as if you're actually steering with it. Which I believe is a setting now on GT Sport. You can actually use the six axis in the controller to steer the car. Which to me is weird. It's like a motion control. Normally it doesn't really work that well. It's like those weird steering wheel attachments that you can get that only really work on the Nintendo Wii when you're playing Mario Kart. They work fine there. Most of the rest of the time, not so much. But, um... It's kind of like that, so I don't really use that, but you can tell, like, when someone's getting really into a, a racing game, when they start steering with the controller. And the other key sign is when they start actually leaning into corners with their, like, leaning their head into corners. Like, I'm leaning over to the right now, like, come on. I'm actually putting, I'm giving myself G-forces. So, it's whatever, whatever approach I'm taking so far, it appears to be working. Because there is third and second in front of us. 
Osterhagen and Ishihara. About to go down, lads. Come on. I've got quite good at this corner now. This was one of those Nagery corners I was never very good at. And as you can see now, doing pretty well at it. We're up alongside Osterhagen. We're banging, banging the doors. We're banging doors, and apparently whenever I bang doors with another car, I lose my voice. My, vo my voice breaks, as well as their body panels. And we're up to third. Now looking to make a run on second. It's a drag race down to turn one. And, um, Ishihara, your car's supposed to be more powerful. You, really, what are you doing? Why are you doing? Just, just get embarrassed, mate. We're actually uh, giving a draft to Osterhagen. And the leader is in front of us, so... Oh my god! Oh, we're being dive-bombed as well! We are being dive We were being three-wide dive-bombed! Christ on a... Where have they gone? Oh, there they are! Fucking hell. Um, right, okay, focus, focus. Stop looking at what on earth's happening behind you, because at the moment it's an absolute cluster fruit cake. And, um... If you're wondering where I got that word from before, uh, cluster fruit cake, it's because when I used to present on student radio, obviously you can't swear on air, so I came up with creative ways to swear. <laughs> Meanwhile... See ya. <laughs> Why? Why bother? Why do it to yourself? You do it to yourself, you do. And that's what really hurts. Um, but, um, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, the origins of Cluster Fruit Cake. I remember hearing Mark Kermo, the film crit critic, use it. And obviously he's on BBC Radio 5 Live, so he definitely can't swear. So he was like, oh, there's a line in this film where a guy says, this is an absolute Cluster Fruit Cake. And um, it just kind of stuck with me. So whenever I was on student radio, I was like, oh, this is an absolute cluster fruitcake. And my co-host would just start busting a gut laughing because they knew exactly what I meant. But it wasn't a swear word. Not a swear word. What's, what's sweary about fruitcake? Ah, oh, really bad thing that is. What a really bad word that is. And um, I would just like to whisper it quietly. Psst, whisper it very quietly. The Porsche hasn't found us yet. In fact, I can't even see it in the distance. There, there definitely was one on the entry list. I'll even show you at the end. If we don't see it during this race, number one, it'll be a miracle. And number two, I will show you the entry list just so I can prove to you there is actually a Porsche in this race. It's not some sort of, like, false hype. Like, I've billed someone to be on the card tonight and then they've no-showed. Maybe that's what's happened. The Porsche just no-showed in the pits. It was just like, oh, that arsehole's back. He managed to beat me in a car with, like, half the horsepower. I'm not doing this. Bollocks, I'm going to go home and polish my rims. Uh, so, meanwhile... We're going to come up behind the leader, who currently does not give a fook. A fuch? A fook? I don't even know if that joke works, because I don't know if that's how you pronounce that surname. Anyway, we are 1.6 seconds behind the leader now. And, well, third and fourth are fading away, and I cannot see that Porsche. Which is weird. I thought we would really enjoy this track. Like, you know, nice long straights and kind of fast corners that can handle really well with. But, um, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm really not complaining, because it means I'm not checking my mirror every two seconds when I should be focusing out the front windscreen because I'm trying to pass the leader. So, we have a lap to go. Can we seal our Box the Spirit campaign up with a second win? Oh, that was a big dive bomb. Big dive bomb and straight down into first gear. And I think he has picked up speed a little bit. A little bit, but we need to focus as well. I'm pretty sure we've still got enough to be him and murder some cones along the way because obviously... <laughs> It wouldn't be a race with me in it without some cone-based murder. Oh, let's just murder some more. I missed that. I cut the corner so badly, I missed the cone. But you know what? I'm g I just let off a little bit there. I was like, I completely cut that corner. For the first time ever, I'm driving like I have a conscience. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we've left the field behind. It's just me and you now, Fuchs. Fuchs? I think it's Fuchs. Oh, Fuchs given up in here. So, oh, oh, you should probably give a Fuchs about his driving. Because at the moment, oh my god, what am I doing? <laughs> that was me being like, oh, your driving sucks. Oh, wait, I'm completely in the wrong gear as well. Right, coming down to the hairpin for the last time. Here we go. Can we dive bomb here? Can we dive bomb here? Can we dive bomb here? Nearly. No, you don't need to break again. Okay, now, now accelerate. Accelerate that big pedal. There we go. Accelerate now. I'm just going to take another look. There's the Porsche. There it is in the very distance behind the two Subarus. It's going to be too late. This time, he's going to miss the train altogether. He's not going to be anywhere near. So, if the Porsche is going to be nowhere near to ruin the party, that means we've got li next to little excuse not to go and win this thing. So let's do it. Come on. Come on, let's focus. Focus, come on. Set up a pass for the chicane. We're quite good there. Oh, we can pass here. Nope, he's protected the line. He's protected the line. The AI are quite good at their racecraft. I will give them that. But at the moment, it's not going to be enough to save him. 
We are right up behind him. We are now doing what the Porsche was doing to us in the first race. Just getting all up in his grills. And here we go. He's defending the line. He's going to try and defend. No, he cuts back to the racing line. Up the inside into the chicane for the final time. Dive bombs it, which... Up the inside. And... Oh, he just cut in front. That was surgical precision. What a beautiful pass. Even by my own normally mediocre standards. Right, let's just get the last corner right. Come on. Come on, let's get it right. Get it right. He's going to have a little bit of a power advantage off the final corner. But I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be enough. And in the distance, there's the Porsche on the podium. But he's going to be too late to the party. We clinch our second win and round out our Boxer Spirit campaign with a victory at the Nürburgring. Probably the best place to get victories, really. And, um... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing at the Samba bus in last again. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Well, we beat Fuchs by 1.2 seconds. And the Porsche 911, it won't even show its deficit. Must have been about five or six seconds at the flag. And that is strange. I thought it would be catching up to us a bit sooner than that. But um, not that I'm complaining. <laughs> it made that final lap battle slightly less stressful. Comment down below. Um, your most random, overpowered AI opponents. I'll give you an example to start. If anyone remembers in Gran Turismo 2, there was a weird bug in that game where in a couple of races, randomly overpowered opponents would show up. Like, literally, cars so overpowered, they didn't even... They were too powerful to meet the entry requirements. So you couldn't enter in a car fast enough to beat them. Now, one of them was hilarious. It was like an endurance race normally full of cars with like 150 horsepower. It was a Vector M12 GT1 with 600 horsepower. They patched that one out, but there was one that still remained where they put a Ford GT40 with over 300 horsepower into a 295 horsepower limited historic race. Genius PD. Leave those down in the comments below. Give this video a big old thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe over there. Press that big red button for more videos. And we will see you next time in the Armbar Arcade. Okay.